Yeah, it's a big topic. I know I've talked about love all the time, and I'm just trying to break it down for people to be able to do things every day and not feel like it's so esoteric that because if you say the word self-love I think what happens is people feel like you're criticizing their ability to love themselves right and that's really not going to help because then they get stuck in that whole vortex of well I'm not doing enough and I'm not doing that right and you know it never gets out of that state so I think just being practical and if you want to go jogging every day (laughs) whatever it is you know like it doesn't have to be you're at your spiritual altar and lighting candles. It can be other things too. Hello everyone and welcome to the Inquisitive Wing Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host. This is a show that brings you interviews and insights from all walks of life on the reality of being. Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Today on the show, I have Pam Barsh, who's an author. She's a spiritual coach, a medium, a meditation teacher, and she works with energy. So she's an energy healer. These are all topics close to my heart. And she believes in the message of love. So we're going to talk to her today about how she helps people heal through love. Pam learned a lot. She'll tell you in a minute about how she came to do this work. It's very interesting. But she also connects with angels, spirit guides, and she has a master's in psychology. So she knows how the brain works. She knows mind, body, spirit. And so she's able to tap into those meridians to help people to balance themselves out and to learn a bit more about how they can heal. And she believes in the power of love and that everyone can learn to heal through love. So, Pam, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I love talking about love. That's my favorite thing. I mean, I think I was born to talk about this. I don't think I was aware of it earlier on as much in my life. I might have been avoiding like really touching into and tapping into my spiritual path. But once it opened up, it was like a big open door and it changed the way I saw everything in my world. Wonderful. Well, let's start there, actually, because as we know, uh, a lot of people struggle with the concept of Mm self-love. I have found through my work, um, sometimes people come for therapy and they often struggle with loving themselves or finding something nice about themselves. And if you've come from a family, perhaps, who were very negative, very critical, there'll be that inner critic. But also, maybe you've had a recent disappointment where you may feel a failure. So sometimes people struggle to understand about self-love and they can turn people off. So what would you say to people who are just starting to learn about self-love and how Mm -hmm. that works. How can we become more self-loving? I think the first part of it, as you're talking about how that's a struggle, is to maybe not be so hard on ourselves, be a little more patient with the way that presents, because sometimes we're trying to be in that mode because we hear it from other people, like you're talking about, like, oh, let's produce more self-love, let's connect to that so we can heal And that can seem a little overwhelming, especially if you have been through something hard. Maybe you've just gotten out of a bad relationship or everything seems to be going wrong in your life and it's not really matching with you. And then you kind of blame yourself for it. So it's hard at that point to attach the idea of, okay, self-love means I should be completely healed. I should be doing really well. I should be able to do all the things that represent self-love and and be really good at it too i mean that's how we're kind of wired is to be overachievers at time at everything and i think just taking little bits of what that represents and it's different for everybody because what i might think is self-love might be different than somebody else like i might say hey i want to i want to walk outside and somebody else wants to do something that's like reading a book or whatever so everybody's a little different how they interpret that and what they need at different times. I work with a lot of clients that struggle with this too. 
that seems to be a very repetitive thing that I see a lot, especially with women. I think they really struggle with that because they are givers naturally and nurturers and all of those things. And so sometimes that's the last thing on the list is to give to yourself because it's easy to take care of other people, right? If you think about it, it's easy for us to give advice to other people. It's easy for us to be supportive for other people, but we don't want to give it to ourselves because we don't want to see the truth that maybe we haven't been taking care of ourselves. Maybe we've been ignoring our own selves, you know, like the inner child, all of that stuff. We've been ignoring it for years. And that's what, what I went through personally is noticing how little I had given to myself, how much I had really listened to my intuition and what, what I needed and spoken up about it and how I even wouldn't ask for help at times either, just really wanting to do everything and kind of fit into the world a certain way and be that identity. But ultimately... What happens is eventually we crash and burn in some way. You know, we we get to that place of waking up a little bit more and realizing we can't continue to do that because your energy is important. You know, self-love comes from your energy, right? And if your energy is drained, it's hard to give yourself that gift because you're giving it to everybody else. So my overall advice there is just really focusing on one tiny thing you can do every day that will give you that gift of love if you can give it to yourself first in one tiny way then that can help you to build it and make it easier and then attract things into your life that match that more and we don't have to be those overachievers at that we can just kind of let that be naturally flowing with the universal energy with our angels and guides rather than forcing it to happen overnight or be perfect or you know have this huge transformation right away because for me it took a while I did go on this healing journey and I spent over a year working on those shifts thinking differently using different affirmations kind of working with my energy with the guides and angels thinking about what had affected me emotionally and things that I needed to like release and let go of fear and things like that and so we're working on that really our entire journey. We're never like really finished with that work. But for me, I took like a deep dive for a long period of time. And even if you don't have a year to take a sabbatical and focus on all that, just know that every day you can make tiny changes to begin to live the life that you really have in your dreams, but maybe aren't allowing it to be real and to come in. And it starts just with one thought one feeling and just taking that first step. Oh, I love that. As you were talking about just taking, doing, trying one thing, just try one thing to start out because I think it may feel or appear to be overwhelming for some people. Um, but you hit on some really important points there. A couple of them were about kind of um, women, women being the natural givers, the natural uh, caretakers, caregivers. And so you're right, uh, women do have to, I believe most women have to work at self-love. And, you know, even you learn from a very early age through uh, having dolls and uh, all sorts of things, you know, you comb your friend's hair and you do each other's hair. You learn to take care of each other in that way and help each other. You lend things to each other and, um, you know, give gifts. We learn to give, 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 but to receive, for some people, it's difficult. And mm -hmm. to receive that from yourself may appear to be even more difficult. So I like what you were saying. So one point that stands out, too, is that you can, it's okay to give something to yourself, and that is self-love. So it sounds like you're defining self-love with being self-caring, self-nurturing. Yeah, that be definitely. Yes. Yes. And also self-awareness, I think, is just tuning in and even on a daily basis, like, what do I need today? What do I need right now? It, you know, sometimes we don't want to say no. So that's a classic thing that we do. But it's also like, what do I need? What can I give to myself right now? We 
get so busy with all the things that we do every day, whether we're working or taking care of our families, running errands, whatever it is, that we never really ask ourselves, okay, now when do I fit into that mix? And what is that? Is that maybe it's exercising or doing yoga or something, or maybe it's, you know, just taking time to be silent and meditate, or maybe it's a hobby, you know, whatever it is, it's different for everybody. And I think we need that self-awareness and to allow that to come through more, really use our intuition to tune in, hear ourselves, and also maybe hear our guides and our angels. They're trying to communicate to us a lot to give us little signs and remind us. I mean, I'm sure you've had experiences too where suddenly somebody tells you something, you hear something, something happens that kind of says, oh, yes, I should be doing that. That's a good idea, right? And if we don't listen, that keeps repeating. So often if you hear something, you notice something, a sign of some kind that keeps repeating over and over, that's your angels and guides trying to give you a little bit of advice, a little guidance, a little wake-up call if needed so that you can find a better path for yourself at that time. They're trying to make it easier, like they're removing the obstacles, basically. Think of like a road that's under construction and they're trying to get you to a road that's not like that so they're saying today can you rest today can you take some time to just you know connect to us or do something that makes you laugh or you know what i mean just like really enjoy your life more and i think that um we tend to tune that out a lot we are so busy with filling our minds with a lot of noise, a lot of things going on, and we don't have that silence. And what I find is when clients talk to me about learning finally how to meditate and have that silence, it kind of concerns them a little bit. They get a little freaked out by it because then they're not sure. They're like, wait, I think I'm hearing something. But is that really true? Am I hearing my own intuition or is it something else? And then they become confused because they're not used to doing that. But I think once we do it over time, it's like practicing anything, really. If you're learning a sport or a hobby of some kind, as you practice that element of relaxation and meditation and, you know, improving your mindset and letting that silence be there, then you can learn to trust because they will show you ways to trust You'll get little clues and you'll say, okay, now I understand. I, I listened to that thing that they told me or I sensed and I went to do that and actually it worked out great. So now I'm going to try it again. And that's what I did when I learned. I I would listen to things and it would, and they would tell me to go to a certain place or to do a certain practice spiritually. And then I would see different results. And even to this day, it's so funny. I'll get little pieces of guidance and sometimes I'll be like, really? That can't be true. <laughs> I'll almost want to question it a little bit because it seems so far-fetched in some of the cases of the things that I've been given. And then I experience it and it's like, okay, y'all are right. I was supposed to drive down that road. I was supposed to go to that place. Like, I just always think, okay, that can't be, you know, it can't be something so weird like that. It's so out there a lot of times that it, it just seems like it's not possible, but when you learn to do it over time and you keep doing it, you believe more and you start to have that anything is possible mentality. But it's it's we block it a lot when we want to see things in a different timing than what's meant to be. Or maybe we want a different result, but that's not really on our path or it's something better than that. And they're trying to get us to open up to other possible routes and experiences and people coming in. So I think trust begins with our heart space. Trust begins with love, right? And when we tap into that love energy, we begin to see things that are possible. We begin to experience real things coming into our world. Our manifestations become easy because we're not controlling them. We're allowing them to flow in naturally. Yes. And do you believe that people are opening up more to the concept of being helped on this earth plane in this incarnation, of being guided, and the concept of intuition and uh, spirit guides? Are people, people opening up a bit more? Is that your experience? Yeah, I would say so, because... 
for me, I mean, even my story, like I came from a very logical pathway. What I was doing before was nothing compared to what I do now. So I wasn't a believer necessarily to this extent of what I do. I would have, if you would have said, Hey, you're going to be a medium one day, you're going to talk to spirit, you're going to channel, you're going to write books. I would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that is not even anything I'm interested in. And so I'm this completely different person, but I'm actually the real version of me. And I think what people are uncovering now, we see it so much. Now it's more in the media. We see it all over the place where people are talking about mindset, mindfulness, meditations, frequencies is because it is starting to shift collectively, but individually people are waking up to their own true selves. They're not really waking up to something they haven't known before. It's always been there. We just haven't really put our awareness there. We haven't like put our taking our masks off enough to see it we're walking around in what we think we should be not just being who we are and so we're just waking up to our own selves our true selves being a spiritual being first being the light rather than trying to fit into being a physical body okay yeah we're in this vessel but before all of that, we came here to be in this space from a spiritual plane, and we're going to go back to that spiritual plane. So we're here in a physical body, and we're switching to have more of a spiritual experience rather than just that materialistic physical manifestation. Yes. And that's really important to know um, because people, I, what, one of the experiences I do have when I'm teaching about spirituality is that if you're new to it you start to go all in and i find people mm -hmm. come a bit too out of their body then they can become mm -hmm. a bit too disconnected and we need to do a lot of grounding work because mm -hmm. we are here in this on this earth plane doing earthly things so we can't be in the spiritual space 24 hours a day um, we have to pay attention to crossing the road <laughs> or treating you badly to stepping in to applying for a job or, you know, treating, doing earthly things. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so when you were talking about your early experiences, what, yeah. did any of that come into it when you first discovered mm -hmm. all of this? Did you go all in or did you, because it's fascinating. It was definitely fascinating. I think, let, let me explain how my experience might be different, though, than somebody awakening. We're all awakening at different paces, and some people have it happen real fast, and other people it's a little slower. For me, because I had an illness going on at that time, and I wasn't as connected to my body because of that, because for me to heal, I needed to be out of my body, okay? So a little, I was a little bit less <clears throat> connected to my body at that time, but during that time, I also learned how to be grounded, too. So it was it was kind of learning how to anchor back to the earth as I had that near death experience. It kind of took me out too much in a way. So I had to learn how to bring myself back. So you have a good point there is that there's a way that you could maybe spend so much time in that spiritual plane that you're not being practical with life either. And there's definitely times when people are not grounded and not paying attention to things going on that are really needed for our attention. So there is a balance there. And I like to consider that. Part of kind of our chakra energy system is we need to be more in balance with everything in alignment with our path. So it is taking time to anchor. That's why I go outside a lot and I, you know, sit under the trees and like to be outside and walk and all of that stuff because those things can keep me more in a grounded state. Even though I do the spiritual work and I am a medium and I connect, I'm always anchoring myself to reality. I'm anchoring myself to experiences that are really going on in the world. Um, I'm not, you know, ignoring that because I think we tend to think, well, everything should be perfect just because we now understand about love, but there's real struggles in the world. So I always pay attention to what those things are and how we can help people to move past that. We don't ignore the fact that they're going through that. We identify it and then we see how we can make changes and gradual shifts but I think going forward, we can learn to be a little more anchored by supporting each other, too, mm -hmm. rather than being isolated, because that's a part of it as well as, you know, sometimes we feel that 
there's nobody that understands where we're coming from. Or maybe if we are going through that spiritual journey, we're doing it alone. And it's, you know, a little bit of a struggle if you don't understand it as much. And it, maybe it's too much all at once. Like you said, that overwhelmed feeling. But having a sense of community, and I think that's what's happening now in the collective, is having more ways to be connected to others that are in that field of that interest. So maybe it's a yoga class, or maybe it's going to a sound healing ceremony, or maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just something you love as a hobby, but those people come together in that way to represent that hobby in a way that has a lot of joy. So whatever it is, I think more connection is where we're going with the energy of the earth and having our spiritual beingness be a part of this earth. Yes. Hi all, thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to say a large percentage of people who are watching right now are not subscribed. So please, please, please click that subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so when a new episode comes out, you'll get a notification, you won't miss it. Also click that like button, it really does make a difference. And finally, on all podcast platforms, leave us a five-star review. It really does help us to keep going. And if there are any topics you'd like me to discuss, do let me know. And in a way, I believe that I'm, I feel lucky that during my huge spiritual awakening, there wasn't the internet and there wasn't a lot. Well, the inter there was the internet, but it wasn't big. And there was mm -hmm. no social media or anything like that. So everything was one-to-one, face-to-face -to -face in groups with people. And that was very, very powerful. And now it's all online, which I find a lot of the information to be not necessarily helpful or even right. Or, But even that, I, you know, I trust spirit will guide and lead people to mm -hmm. the right space and to the right information. Um, so now you mentioned, though, Pam, about your illness and your early experiences as well and the near-death experience. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I've actually technically had three near-death experiences. I know that seems a little far-fetched, but I have had several different points in my life where there was something similar to that but the one that was the one that it stuck out to me the most as the most prominent when I was going through something so deeply healing that I literally was not going to be able to function at all as my body was just shutting down I um, had this moment when my heart felt off and I had been going through this process of um, trying to find answers because I had been feeling well for about a week and I was going to the different hospitals trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And I kept feeling like there was something wrong with my heart. They never could really figure out what it was, but they kept trying to help me, you know, to give me fluids and things like that. But nothing was happening that was helping me there. So I just eventually went home to rest after going to one of the emergency room visits. And when I was in bed, I just all of a sudden just felt like I was leaving my body I could sense that there was this light. I couldn't sense my body as much anymore, just this light that was in front of me. And I, I sensed it as being an angel, which is interesting because I hadn't really talked about angels before at all. I never had really had a book on an angel. I never knew anything about angels, honestly. So for me to say that was kind of, I was thinking that's a little unusual. Like, why am I saying that, right? But that's what it was. That was the... Um, presence of that energy and it was a very loving healing energy it felt like um just kind of being in an, another world in a way like just stepping into a different it's like a different room with a bright light and so I immediately had this sensation of like I'm not going to be here and I need to do something if I want to stay here so the first thing I thought about was I wanted to write a book. Now, I don't know how in that small amount of time, it's almost like things happen in a way there's no time, like a bunch of things happen that normally would take us hours to to process within that space of that near-death experience. It happens really fast. I had all of those things happen at the same time. 
I felt like I need to write a book. And so I thought if I come back, this is kind of what I'm going to do. So I think that experience for me, that, that thing with the angels, the near death, the communication that was going on, I think it happened because I had this plan all along, but I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't connecting to it. And so I wasn't listening to my purpose. I wasn't listening to why I was here. So that was a wake up call for me. Now, when I came back, it's not that I was instantly healed. I, like I said, I had to go through a year long experience of learning how to function in my body again. You know, like I couldn't do normal things. I couldn't eat very well. I couldn't drive. I couldn't walk. Like my nervous system was completely messed up. My heart had to be healed a lot as far as more of an energetic level of things going on. I mean, I'm not sure if they could have tested me to find anything physically at that time, but I do know that I saw the angels healing my heart space. So there was definitely something there that was not right. So at that time, I just went through that journey of believing and connecting, communicating to them as much as I could, even though I was like really overwhelmed um, with my nervous system and it kept shutting down every day. I just kept believing and I would see myself as healed. I would see myself further down the road, like, okay, I'm, I'm in front of people talking about my book or I'm able to function and do all the things I want to do, or I'm traveling. I would see myself in a different way. My whole body was completely different in the light and everything that it was. So I just kept doing that over and over and over again. And I also started writing in that process of working through a lot of that healing. The writing to me was a big healer because for me, it's like it connects me to my heart space. It connects me to something that's very simple and pure and coming from my true spirit it's not something that I'm trying to create because somebody said, hey, can you do this? It's like it's what I it's what I meant to do. It's my passion. And so that's why it started to come through so easily. And writing for me is like definitely it's who I am. I am a writer. So I ended up writing a book and it took me, you know, a few months during that time. And it's right here. Shine I'll from your I'll soul. I'll put a picture. Yeah. On and a link to it below yeah we'll have a link to it later but it's it was just pure like connection I wouldn't say oh I channeled that book because technically I'm always channeling in a way but it's definitely like this connection things would come to me like little synchronicities and I would go outside and see things and I'd be like okay I've got to write about that so whatever I experienced during that healing journey is something I began to write about I didn't have any prior knowledge of any of this stuff, you know, being on earth. Like I literally had not read any books on the topic. I hadn't watched any videos. I had no knowledge. So all of the stuff that came through about energy was just coming to me through that connection. And that still like really, you know, inspires me to this day. And that's why I continue to write because I wasn't doing that before that. I had that ability, that gift to bring that information in. And I wasn't following that in the early part of my life. So I think it would have been nice if I hadn't had had to go through that big, you know, wake up call and everything. But it served its purpose, right? It got me to where I need to be to help people see, you know, the things I went through. They don't have to go through as much. They can start start taking those steps and begin to do that self-love and connection and use their intuition to even do minor changes, you know, like little things with our food and the ways that we talk to ourselves can help to change your world, like your beliefs, your thoughts, your actions, your words, your emotions, they all come together to create what is in your world. Yes, and just about your book as well, what will readers gain from your book? I know that you, you talk about your experiences in the book. You give examples as well of things that have happened. You mm -hmm. also give some advice. You talk a, a little bit about um, how you too can kind of begin to, to pay attention and listen and through your examples, through what you've been through. So what will readers gain from, from reading the book? I think the biggest thing is I wrote this from a place of inspiration. So it's kind of a gentle journey that you take. 
and begin to shed the fear and all the things that have held you back from tapping into your true self. And so it doesn't like force you to do it. It doesn't make you do certain things or follow a certain method. It's more like you get your own personal journey from that experience. You'll be inspired by different words in the book, but also there's practical applications too, where there's like journaling activities and things that you can do for you to discover who you are, because your your experience is going to be completely different. How you feel, where you are, what you have had in your life, and how you want to transform that is going to be unique. The whole idea is to heal and release a lot of energy as you work through the book, but also to build a new identity and manifest that identity, the real you, rather than the one that maybe you have been presenting to other people. Oh, that's interesting. So it really is a like a workbook, you know, that you mm-hmm. you you're going to space it out and do different exercises, I suppose. Yes, you could. There's exercises at the end of the chapters. And what's really nice about the structure of it, and this is what came from Spirit, they designed the whole book. <laughs> um, I think that you could really almost open the book at any place and get a little inspiration that day. So it it's kind of made to be taken in little bite-sized pieces, or you can just go through the whole journey however you wish in whatever time. But you can always pick it up and just flip to a certain page and see if there's something that Spirit wants you to know that day. Yeah, amazing. Sometimes I I think when people are searching something like your book, which is a tool, a bit of a toolbox, of things that you can apply because it's all right reading loads of books. A lot of people just get into spirituality and they buy all the books Mm -hmm. and they read all the books, but then what are they doing practically to help Mm -hmm. themselves along? So your book gives some very practical exercises and things that people can do to help them. That was important to me, I think, because I have, a very practical mindset and I do come from that psychology background as well. So I always want to think about if somebody feels stuck, if there's something that's not working out for them, whatever that may be, well, what are the things that we can do to shift that? Like how can we change our energy and how can we take actions? I'm very action oriented. If you think about manifesting, one of the things that often gets left behind is actions. Because we can write things in our journal, we can do affirmations, we can listen to meditations, we can listen to all the gurus in the world. But if we're not taking the actions, then nothing is going to change. So if I told myself way back when, when I had my near-death experience, that I wanted to write the book, but I didn't actually write the book, and I didn't write all those things down that Spirit was giving me initially, I would have never put it together. It would have been a thought in my mind And I would have still tried to manifest it in some way, I'm sure, by listening to affirmations. But you sometimes have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit, especially when you're trying to recreate your life and tap into your true self, because it's a part that's been hidden. And it's a little scary at first because it's like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Or, wow, this could be so big. Sometimes we're really afraid of the great things that we can do in the world, right? The more that we realize how powerful we are, the more we can get that fear going of, oh, my gosh, now what will happen? And, you know, all these things could go terribly wrong because we start to wonder how people perceive us. We do worry too much about how others see us and and judge us and label us and things like that. And I think we just need to think about what do we want to leave behind in this world? Number one, because we're not going to be here forever, right? And if it's, you know, the last day of your life, what are the things you wish you would have done? You know, what are the things on the list that are the most important? And I don't think we're going to be looking back and have a long list of, oh, my gosh, all these people, you know, said all these things and judge me in different ways. Sometimes we're the worst judges of ourselves, you know, and don't allow ourselves to get into that place. And that's what keeps us from taking those action steps. So I think we have to move through the fear with love and so we can find ourselves and feeling that love do people talk uh to you about what they feel 
or or is it more what they see or what they think or is it a combination of things when they first start to come into contact with what would be self-love for them or an expression of love for them that's a good question i think it varies a lot i have seen different things based on a person's senses that are most prominent and how they process the world energetically because I think we're all a little different in that way like one a person might be a feeler and they say I feel this intense feeling around me or like this this is off or this person doesn't feel good or whatever right they'll say that a lot another person might not be in that feeling energy as much they might be more logical or in a sense of knowing and so theirs comes through a little differently and then they don't know how to process the feelings and that might be a stuck energy too if they are not able to tap into it so it's really different i've seen a lot of different responses based on people's senses that goes into all the things like the clairvoyance and the clairsentience and things like that so we're all intuitive we're like these antennas right we can pick up on things with other people around us in the physical world and our angels and guides and we might have different ways of using that antenna so, you know, I'm a feeler, so I might feel more. I also have a lot of clairvoyance, so I might see more and I might talk about colors. But to someone else, maybe they don't have that interpretation. They may do a meditation and never see images like I see or see colors. They might just feel different things or just feel relaxed. You know, there's different responses based on that person's um, abilities within their intuition and also what they're open to at that time and maybe where they are in their journey. So it, it does vary. And I think based on that, I would try to work on what are your strengths and how you can connect and, and don't try to be something you're not, you know, like if you're not really, it's like if I wouldn't be like an auto mechanic or something, like I'm not good at it. I wouldn't be somebody taking care of plants. Cause I think I tend to not take care of plants very well. Right. So I'm not going to be a gardener. Um, I think that we can learn how to do the ones that we maybe are not as strong in, but we should definitely use our strengths more first, because what that does is it gives us that confidence and the ability to trust in the messages so we can build on the other ones later. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. What are your thoughts about how people come onto their life path? In other words, because I know you deal a lot with helping people to actualize and to realize where they're going, their path using love, tapping mm -hmm. into the heart chakra and using love for that expression, for that to come up and be shown or be sensed or felt or however people do it and as you say it's different for everyone but I'm thinking about people who uh, an example would be someone emailed me not long ago saying that they wanted to be an actor and that they were moving to Los Angeles and and that um, they feel it's their path and they had n done nothing to prepare for that uh, they had no experience. They said they'd never been on stage. They'd never been in front of a TV screen. Now, that doesn't mean they can't do it. Mm -hmm. But how will people, if, if people are looking at their life paths and what they're meant to be and tapping into energy, tapping into the source, learning from their guides and helpers, how can people start to do that for themselves? Um, in this person's case, somebody told them, oh, well, you'd be a good actor because they they were just playing about, playing around. But that doesn't mean that's the case. So I direct the person to tap in themselves and to get into their own body and into their mm -hmm. own spirit and tap into spirit and see where they were being led as opposed to where others were leading or appeared to be leading them. So what right. are your thoughts about that in helping people to get yeah. to themselves? 
That's an interesting topic. I think that a lot of my clients do come to me because they are confused about their path and maybe they aren't as, you know, attuned to what that is, or they get different things that are conflicting that are coming to them. And so they don't know, or maybe they are listening to other people a lot. And so there's, that's where the confusion comes in. Um, I think some of the things that we talked about earlier about taking action steps is very similar in this case too. Like we might have different ideas. Like I could say, well, I want to be this kind of writer or another kind of writer, or maybe I want to be a medium and an energy healer. So when I started my path, I could have just been one thing, right? I could have just said, okay, I'm just a medium. But then I was like, I'm interested in so many different things. So I started to take classes and other things as well, learn about chakras and crystals and a lot of different things there. So it has helped me to work with clients and to learn more about myself and, you know, just to feel more empowered on my journey and discover things. I think when you're going on something, let's say it's brand new and it's something you've never done before, like you're talking about, and maybe you got that idea from somebody else. Maybe it came from within you, wherever it may have come from. It doesn't matter if you feel drawn to it. You can start to pursue it in different ways. Now, some of us may take bigger chances than others, and that may look strange to some of us if some people take a bigger leap. But what we're doing is we're learning about ourselves. Let's say even if we didn't become an actor, an actress that was you know, in front of a lot of people and making TV shows and movies and all of those things, we might still learn about ourselves in the process of what we like and don't like or what fits us or are we really being true to ourselves or we might discover we don't like it or maybe it's our greatest love in the world and we're actually really good at it. We don't know until we try. So if you do feel a pull to things like that, like I need to move to this location, I hear people say that a lot, or I've always wanted to do this particular hobby and I've never tried it before. I think I want to change my jobs to a completely different career path. I, I say start to try things within that space. You know, if you're not sure about it, if you, you don't know if you want to trust your intuition on it, or maybe you're not even sure if it's your intuition or if it's just something else that's coming to you, maybe take things steps where you can implement pieces of it to try it out a little bit to see if it's something that does continue to feed you in a good positive way and then you can embrace it more but either way if you go into it like all in or if you're just kind of like checking it out like a little journey a little vacation you know whatever it may be it can still help you to grow as a soul as a as a human being as well on this earth and I think those things are important. We just don't know. If we sit at home and we think about all the dreams, but we don't start finding a way to put them in place, we won't really know. And I we I think we would be more happy at least knowing we we attempted to do all these things that we were drawn to rather than we thought about it and we never got to do it because there's people that have regrets at the end of their lives. Like they didn't get to travel to some place they wanted to see or they didn't get to try out something new that they've always had in their mind that they wanted to try. Like maybe it was an art, you know, like painting or something and it was way out there and they're in a technical field. So they thought it didn't fit or could never, you know, provide them anything. So I think we're always on that journey of learning and discovery. So I think we do have our true paths, though. We do have our set path that we have chosen before we got here and that will never change okay and our purpose really is to remember that we're love so if we think about that that's pretty simple right it's not like we have to do a bunch of things but we do pick out kind of our friends and people that will be around us and maybe some experiences with different career paths and things like that so what will happen is if you pick something that doesn't end up aligning with you, or maybe it is just kind of a little bit of a detour and not your main path, what will happen is your energy will keep bringing you back to your main path. So even if, let's say, you wanted to be an actress, like that example, and you found out that you went down that path and maybe it just wasn't working out or you didn't feel right about it and something kept drawing you in a different direction, that's probably because your, your real path is something else. But this was just a learning time in your life to get to that. Sometimes we need those little places like to go from instead of point A to point Z, we have to have the little places along the way to get us there. And that's what I think most of us do. We go through 
different friendships, different jobs, different places we live before we truly find, oh, now I understand how it connects. Now I understand how that led me to something different. Yes. Okay. That's really good. Um, because what you're essentially saying is it's really not the wrong choice or the right choice. It's your choice. If you feel drawn to something, then at that time, if it's right for you, it's right for you. And what comes with that are life lessons, a growing, yes. whatever yeah. it is. I think we also do that to shift our energy yeah. in a way. If you think about it, like if you stay in the same place for a long time and you might start to feel like bored with your life or stuck or something, Sometimes we'll move somewhere else to a different house, to a different city, or we'll go on a vacation, or we'll go to try a new hobby or something, because we're trying to move our energy, because we're not meant to be stagnant, basically. Exactly. Yes, absolutely right. We are not meant to be stagnant. Now, for some people, they will be thinking, right, I don't feel as though I've got the power to shift. I've got to stay in this job or I've got to stay in this home or this marriage or this relationship or this family or whatever it is, this country. And I can't, I, I feel as though I'm hedged in. I can't move. What would you say to people? How can they start to just become a little bit more, I'm going to use the word aligned. Um, mm -hmm. And I think our listeners will know what I mean by that, but just maybe in tune, aligned in uh, succinct, you know, symphony perhaps with mm -hmm. their path and what their next steps might be. How should they start? Yeah. I think it would be really helpful to slow down within that energy a little bit and take some time to really focus on where that's coming from. Like, what are the obstacles really? And what are, why are they there? You know, things like that. I mean, it's as simple as, okay, I'm, a, I'm afraid to move to this place because I feel like I'm stuck. Well, why are we afraid to do that? You know, what is, what's the worst thing that can happen is a lot of times what I say, what is the worst thing that can happen if I do that and it doesn't work out for me? What is the worst thing that can happen, right? Sometimes we create all these stories of why this isn't good for us. And so us feeling stuck is really just our physical beingness saying, I want something different. I want to try something new. I want to be in a different energy. And if we don't find what that is, and it doesn't have to be moving, it could be something else. You know, you could be going to yoga class or Tai Chi or something like that and move the energy or go do a sport that you like or hiking or whatever, right? Anything like that can move the energy too. But what your body is really telling you is, I feel like I need something different right now. I need to experience a different feeling. I've been in the same place. And if we're feeling that and we're fighting it a little bit, we're usually in a phase of our lives where it's about to turn. It's like we're going to a new phase, kind of like when we go through the moon phases, right? So we're we're getting into a big shift there, but we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to embrace it. We're trying to run from it. And it's almost like when, you know, you can imagine like you take a kid to a park and they don't want to leave and they want to stay on the pl the playground playing and maybe they're holding on to the the slide and they're like no don't 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 make me go home or whatever it's kind of like that we hold on to our energy of what we've always known it's familiar it's the you know the circumstances the people the places and but we're still getting that sense at the same time that we're you know feeling that like oh i can't do it i don't know if i should we're still getting that thing that keeps repeating telling us but it would be so nice if you could just <laughs> take a little vacation to this place you've never been or maybe go try out this place across town that has a new group of friends that you could hang out with. And maybe we get stuck more as we go through phases in our lives where we have seen things happen that didn't go right. See, and that's like scary because we've seen things happen that didn't align when we tried it out and we we were trying to be in that new energy. and. Once we um, 
get stuck with that fear, it can be hard to embrace what is different. I think I've heard many times people say, you know, like as we get older, we tend not to want to get out of the box and things like that. But I'm trying, I'm trying not to be in the box at all. I'm like, there's no boxes. Okay. <laughs> and just whatever may be, wherever spirit leads me. But in order to get out of that feeling, it's first identifying where does that fear come from? You know, what is that? Because it always originates with something else that happened in our lives that maybe it's, you know, recent, maybe it's a long time ago. Maybe it's something that has happened in a job or maybe it happened when you're younger and, you know, with your family and there's somebody told you something like you can't do that or you should always work hard or, you know, things people tell us stuff and we start to internalize all those things. But who would we be? If we didn't have all of that in our minds that was directing our energy, what if we could direct our own energy, be our own creator? Yeah. Oh, that's good. That is really good because you're right. Those voices, those thoughts have been kind of just passed down. And you do have to find your own voice. I remember once someone repeated something to me that about somebody and I, I just said to them, that doesn't sound like them. That doesn't sound right. Um, who told you that? I just knew instinctively somebody had told mm -hmm. them that and it wasn't their thought. And they said, oh, yeah, somebody did say that to them. So they, we, we too, I say that, say, I think mm -hmm. we too have to be aware of when we are repeating things that have been implanted through no fault of some people's, you know, mm -hmm. parents, we're not blaming anyone, but because it could be peers as well. Your, your peers can do that to you as well. That's all group stuff too, the groups you hang out with. So that's interesting. Now, we're just going to segue just to a quick little um, topic about past lives, because I know that you know all about past lives. So what are your thoughts and experiences with helping people and how can exploring past lives help others? Well, exploring past lives varies a lot with each individual because sometimes things do come up that repeat in this life that are very similar and we'll start to get more of a knowing of that and question things in our lives. And that could be something that's trying to heal from a past life. If we feel drawn to learning more about past lives, that's usually a sign that there's something that we're working on with that. If we're not really as interested or we don't feel like it's, you know, something that we need to pursue, then I think we need to remember to embrace our current life that we're trying to create energy from, because this is what will create all the energy within us within every life that we have, right? So if we don't need it, I don't think we should pursue it as much. I think it's just something if you feel like there's a healing that you are feeling a sense of there's something there. Um, otherwise, if it comes up like in a meditation, if you're meditating and you feel like you get a memory from a past life, maybe observe that and see if there's something to learn from it. I think the whole purpose is we're resolving energy things that have happened to us all of the time in this life and further on into other lives. We're always learning to be more in that state of love and light, right? And so maybe in past lives, we had other experiences that caused us to maybe get into a pattern that's not really good for us, but it was just a learning experience. And so here it may come up again to see, did we learn from that experience to produce something different that really is more in alignment with us? So I think they serve a purpose of being very healing for some people. I think other people, it's okay if they're not, you know, really as interested. I think we all need to pick our different paths with spirituality or mindfulness and healing and what we're drawn to the most is where that energy is going to work with us. Yes. Okay. That that's really helpful. So how can we, as we end our interview today, viewers, listeners, we want to look at how we can all become more self-loving, more of a representation of self-care more of a representation 
showing up in the world as loving, caring. So, Pam, how can we become more loving, more caring towards ourselves and towards each other? I think the easiest way for us to embrace this idea is to remember that when you're interacting with someone near you, whether it's a friend or family member, or maybe even somebody that is a stranger to you in public, to always see through the eyes of love and see that person as though they are you. And if you share words of comfort and support and love with that person, begin to think about that also coming to you as well in that moment. And I think if we could talk to other people, how we want to be talked to and vice versa, I think we would be in a lot stronger energy and a much more high vibrational plane. And also your mm -hmm. website. They can yes, you can go on my website and you can see the book a little bit. I have the table of contents on there and I'll have more content on my website soon, which will correlate with the book as well with a lot more exercises and videos and things that you can do on the journey. Excellent. And have you anything coming up, uh, workshops, uh, or are you still, is, is it all just one-to-one? -one? I do one-on-one um, -on -one group, one-on-one -on -one sessions coaching and group coaching as well. So I'm putting together a group right now for women who are looking for transformations and wanting to work with their energy more and make those changes happen in a way that is not as hard and is helping them to connect to that healing energy. So they would be receiving a lot of messages from spirit during that experience as well. So both the individual and the group coaching are options that I have right now. And I have a lot of new courses that are going to be coming out soon. So if you go to my website, there is a free ebook that you can download. And when you receive that ebook, you'll be on my email list to receive information about when the courses come out. That's perfect. Great. Well, thank you so much and um, hope you come back as well and have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to like, subscribe and comment and share the video on your favorite podcast platform. You can also follow on your favorite social media platform. See you soon.